Welcome to American Baker in Germany. I'm Michelle, and this is Sabrina. Sabrina. How old are you? Five. <laughs> okay. And we are getting ready to make a clock, a clock cake. A clock cake for New Year's. And what kind of a clock cake are we making? You know what kind of cake is inside? Confetti. No. <laughs> it is after eight cake. Um, chocolate mint. So excited! It's one of my favorite flavors. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> so we are making an after eight okay. New Year's clock cake. Yep. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna help me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's get started. Let's get started. Yeah. <laughs> I start out flavoring my buttercream. This is one recipe of my Swiss meringue buttercream, which is up on the channel if you need a recipe, minus the vanilla. Instead, I end up adding a tablespoon in total of peppermint flavoring. Then I color it with about five drops of green in total and two drops of blue to make it a nice minty green. Next, I stack my cake. I use a bit of buttercream on the cake board to stick it down and put a layer of vegan chocolate cake. I fill the cake with peppermint buttercream and after eights, covering them in peppermint buttercream as well to help everything to stick together. Then I do the whole process again to add another layer. I usually only do two layer cakes, but I just felt like you couldn't go wrong with more after eights. Then I crumb coat the cake in peppermint buttercream and chill it in the fridge for half an hour to allow the buttercream to set. While the buttercream is chilling, I get out a whole bunch of different colors of fondant, including a lot of white. Then I sort through my flour cutters and pick out the smallest ones. I also get out my flour texture fondant rolling pin. Then I frost my cake with a bit more peppermint buttercream, just to make sure there's enough peppermint on the cake. I smooth the buttercream. and clean up my cake board with a wet rag. I measure the cake to make sure that I roll my fondant out large enough and roll out a large piece of white fondant. My vision for this cake is more of an old-fashioned porcelain clock with gold accents and colorful flowers like your great-grandmother might have always had on her mantle. I texture the white fondant with my flower texture roller, doing my best to line up the design. Then I picked it up with my fondant rolling pin and draped it over the cake. This time, as I smooth the fondant, I only use my hands, and I smooth extra carefully to try not to lose that lovely texture. I cut off the excess fondant with a knife, and then trim a bit closer to trim it flush to the cake. I debate Roman or Arabic numerals for a moment and eventually decide on Roman. I press out I's, V's, and X's with my fondant press mold in black fondant. I press out 4 X's, 5 V's, and 17 I's to form the numbers on my clock. I begin placing the numbers with the number 12 on the top of the clock. From there, I use my ruler to make marks on the cake to ensure that I place the rest of the numbers in line with the first. 
Then I place the rest of my Roman numerals around the clock face. If you like what we do here, consider subscribing to our channel for a new cake video every Monday at 7 a.m. Central European Time, plus regular bonus videos with recipes and baking basics. Once I finish the numbers, I put some black fondant into my clay extruder and make several black cords that I will use to make the clock hands. I decide to make the time a few minutes after 8 o'clock as a play on the name After Eights. I begin in the center and twist it to make a couple of loops before cutting it to length. Then I make the arrows for the tips and stick them on. And I make a group of three loops and press them on the hands to make them more ornate. Loving how it looks so far. Then, using my clay extruder again, I make a cord of yellow-orange fondant to wrap around the bottom of the cake. Then I extrude a thinner cord of yellow-orange and wrap it around the cake in a whimsical, twisting fashion. But I really want gold, not yellow-orange. So I mix some gold luster dust with clear alcohol and paint it on the yellow-orange fondant cords. The color didn't change dramatically, but I love the gold shimmer that was added to it. This next step is one you can have the kids help you with. I rolled out several different bright colors of fondant and cut out some simple flowers using my flower cutters. I start out with red, and then pink, then purple, then blue. Then orange, and finally green. We cut leaves out of green instead of flowers. Sabrina helped me place them on the cake as well. There's really no pattern here. We started out covering any smudges or seams in the cords. Past that, you can just place the flowers wherever they look good. My daughter was so proud to have been able to help. I'm really proud of this cake. First of all, chocolate mint? I could have eaten the whole thing myself. But also, I think the clock turned out lovely. I love the Roman numerals, the ornate clock hands, and the gold accents along the side. Plus, the flowers added a burst of color and brightness. We are looking optimistically to the future. May the next year be better than the last. Happy New Year! Hey, now the camera just Yeah? You see that? Hi. <laughs> so, oh, what are we talking about today? The clock cake, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. and you have to say happy new year, Mama. That's right. Good. <laughs> All right. Hello.